What's up YouTube? In this video we're going to talk about focal lengths on a lens. Basically, I see this question come up a lot in beginner groups on Facebook in regards to how do you figure out what lens you need for certain shooting situations, right? What focal length? Do I need an 18 millimeter? Do I need 35? Do I need 50? Do I need, you know, 85, 100, 105? Like, I don't know what to do. Ah! So basically this is how I go about doing it. You could go as far as looking up charts online, um, you know, to see the actual angle of view per focal range of each lens, but I personally don't know anybody who actually does that. What I do is I pre-visualize what it is that I'm going to shoot. So if I know I'm going to be doing uh, wildlife, birds in flight, especially if it's a far distance, then, you know, I'll take something like this 55-300 lens. Uh, you know, it gives me, on a crop sensor camera, it gives me a good range to actually shoot and, um, yeah, I mean, it's pretty much just visualizing what it is you're going to shoot and trying to guesstimate how far away you're going to be. Um, you know, do you need the wider angle? If I'm going to be doing more street oriented photography, portraiture, uh, you know, just general walkabout kind of stuff, then I may use a, if I don't really have a plan, then I'll use something like the 18 135 because it gives me a very long range of uh, focal lengths to choose from. Or, if, I, if I'm pretty sure I'm not going to be focusing on anything that's going to require an extended length, then I'll use something like a 1770. General all-purpose walk-around lens. I mean, there is no concrete thing of use this lens for this. I mean, there's people who shoot portraits with 200 millimeter lenses, 100 millimeter lenses, 135s, 70s, 85s. It, it all depends. I mean, there's people who use 50s for portraiture and the photos come out beautifully. But if you're going for like a wider landscape type look, then a 10 to 20 lens would be would be more ideal. If you're going for wildlife, an 1855 isn't really going to work. Uh, 135 may not quite be long enough. It depends. If you want the more environmental type of shot where there's a lot of scenery, and the animal you're shooting is going to be a small piece of that image, then sure, a 135 or a 100, maybe even an 85 would actually work well. Uh, like I said, there's no hard, fast, concrete rule to figure out exactly what you need. You just have to visualize the scenario um, that you're going to be shooting and tailor what you're going to need from that, from that idea. Uh, for example, when I go out, <clears throat> if I'm going to be heading out to shoot some birds in flight, generally I will only take one lens. I will take the 55-300. That's it. I'm only going out to shoot the one thing, and that's what I'm going to focus on. I'm not going to all of a sudden use the lens for something I didn't intend for, so I'm not going to start shooting landscapes when I'm not even in like a landscape area. I'm at a specific spot to concentrate on getting birds in flight. All right, same thing if you're gonna shoot landscapes. If it's a far away landscape, you have to keep that in mind, right? If it's a far away landscape, then maybe a 200 actually would do well, because then you can bring that in, you know, especially if you live in like the more mountainous regions. Mountains are pretty far away. You wanna bring that a bit closer. You need a, a longer focal length in order to do that. If you used a wide angle lens, the mountains would be like this tall, right? So, I mean, there, you know, I'll, I'll give you some examples of uh, various focal lengths in regards to shooting. Uh, we'll crop some of them to show you what the difference would be generally. Um, it's not going to be 100% perfect, but just to show you what different focal lengths would translate into when you're shooting. So that would hopefully give you a visual representation of how to go about thinking of what you should take when you're going out to shoot. Okay, let's take a look at some images here. So this is from a trip out to the East Coast. Uh, stopped in uh, Quebec City as well as uh, went out to Nova Scotia and New Brunswick. Anyway, so this was in Quebec City. So this was shot with 18mm uh, uh, wide 
and if I crop this, the default cropping on this program is 50%, which I've done the math, I've done the calculation, I hope I'm right, uh, works out to 27 millimeters once it's cropped. So this is actually what, re this is the region you would have to work with if you were shooting a 27. Now, I wanted to get the full width of the street on this image. I wanted to get the top of the building and everything. I wanted an all-encompassing view. So if I didn't have something as wide as an 18, then I would only have this little window to actually work with, unfortunately. And as you can see, I mean, that really does not give you a lot of options in regards to you know, depending on what it is that you're trying to shoot, right? I wanted to get the top of the building, so if I wanted to get the top of the building, the image would look like this. Which is not very good, right? And if I go back, and let's see, let's try a different composition here. Uh, say I wanted, you know, just my main focus was the people. I didn't really care much about the building. I'd still be missing a lot of the people on this street. It just it wouldn't be a very cohesive image in regards to what look I was actually going for. There there really wouldn't be you you'd be very very limited as to what you could actually do. Like what is that? What what, what is that? That, that? Like what what is that? That's nothing. There, there's there, there's nothing there. At least for me. So that's one example. Let's move on to another eighteen. No, I don't want to save my changes. I just want to move on to the next one. So here was uh, at the top of uh, in Quebec. I can't remember exactly what the location was called that I was on top of. Um, but as you can see here, I wanted to get the whole waterfront area. I wanted to get the far off distance scale, you know, all, not really bird's eye view, but quarter view, I guess, you know, just looking down at all the buildings and everything. But I wanted an all encompassing photo in regards to what I was actually seeing because I was blown. I was blown away by the view that was possible from this vantage point. I mean, th this is just beautiful. So if we were to crop that to a 27, what you would actually get is something you wouldn't really be able to work with. You would just get whatever is in this window, right? Like it's not, there's really not a whole lot you'd be able to work with here whatsoever. Um, you know, like you say, if you wanted the street, then would basically be this but you're missing you're missing the whole vantage of where you actually are this all of a sudden I mean it is not nearly the same image as what I originally shot right so let's move on to another 18 that's my wife and my daughter uh, this is when the tide was out uh, yeah, so again, I wanted to get the scale of just, I mean, as far as you can see, I mean, the water's way, way, way offshore, way offshore. And it's just sand, beach, you know, some rocks here. Like, you're basically standing in the ocean. Like, it was absolutely f incredible. But if we crop this and bring this to a 27 as well, you'll notice there really isn't much... The, basically, the, the image will just fall apart. There's really nothing here. If I wanted to get both of them, well, I guess I guess I could have. But again, I mean, it's not. It just it doesn't have the vastness, the all-encompassing feel of this original image. You know, just with the width. So here's another 18. Yeah, don't ask me again. <laughs> All right, so here's another 18. Similar thing. I just wanted, you know, just as wide and as far out as you could see with the clouds and everything, right? So if we were to bring this in, you'll see that, again, there's just not much to work with whatsoever, right? I want the clouds. Okay, so if I want all the clouds, then I'm missing the land. 
If I want the land, then I'm missing the clouds, right? So this is an example of, you know, what, what happens when, uh, oh, wait, can I even do that? Yeah. So th this is an example of, you know, making sure you think about what it is that you're going to shoot before you actually head out the door. Right. And again, I wanted another wide angle, you know, but basically think of these squares would be your options in regards to what you'd be able to capture. Right. It's just not not very uh, good. And, and here's another one at the Hopewell Rocks in New Brunswick. I wanted to capture the scale of people against the actual Hopewell Rocks and how you know the how shallow the water is because the tide was completely out if i crop this you'll notice again you know it just it's not a very uh not a very encompassing image compared to what i had originally shot with the wide angle right you know i could get a few people but then i might be able to squeeze in a rock nope i just cut this person off here but no, so, I mean, that that's what I would get. It just does not have the same feel. And I knew specifically that I, w I was going to be shooting wide angle, so I brought a wider angle lens. And same with this. I shot this at 24, laying on the ground, looking like a crazed lunatic. Everybody was staring at me as they walked by. But it is what it is. You got to do what you got to do to get those photos. So if we were to actually take a look at this one, it just wouldn't, uh, you know, I, I would miss the blur from this person here to show, you know, just the, the speed from walking. It just wouldn't be the same. Um, you know, like if I wanted to get, I wouldn't even get any of the boardwalk if I tried to get this whole building in there, right? So it's another example of, absolutely without a question needing that wide angle it just doesn't it just doesn't represent the vantage that you know I was going for at that time and then here's a uh, 36 That's my daughter <laughs> uh, so you know I just wanted to have her just off to the side so you could still see like just how far even though it is blurred I did that on purpose just wanted to see, you know, just show some of the out of focus area, but you can see the depth as to how far you can actually see from where we were. And again, you know, if this was cropped in, you know, it just it wouldn't work. It just would not work. And here's 60. So to get this whole building, I was at 60 millimeters. If I had brought uh, say something like a 90, then what I'd be working with would be. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Oh, that was just in time. You know, I'd be able to maybe cap. Well, I wouldn't even be able to capture this whole thing. I wouldn't even be able to capture this whole top of the building. You know, this whole tower. Uh, yeah, it it just it it just would not be the right look whatsoever. You know, if I wanted to capture that whole thing, then we would have this. And what is that? That's that 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 that's like a that's like a book with ninety percent of the pages missing. You know, just not good. Nobody would want to read that. And here's another one. Uh, I shot this at sixty millimeters, and looking at this one. You know, so let's bring this to 90 millimeters as well. And let's take a look at what we can capture here. So I wanted the two people, but I also wanted all these buildings. And as you can see, I just cut these two people off. So that's not really going to work. Could bring it down. Have the trees there. Let's try that. It's okay. But I cut off the building, right? So... You just got to kind of, it takes time, but you just got to pre-visualize exactly what it is that you're trying to shoot, and then you just take it from there. You know, eventually you'll know you're going out for a specific thing, and that's what you want to shoot. Uh, here's another example. So 
this first one here I shot at 250 millimeters because I wanted to get the boat you know and you know the vastness of the sea and uh, you know just the rocks and then here's the same vantage point at 450 millimeters All right so it doesn't have the same look but I wanted to focus more on the actual lighthouse there just happened to be another boat here versus the wider angle actually it's, oh actually it's the same boat they just turned uh, you know this is the wider angle and you know just to show just how tall these rocks are and everything versus the 450 millimeter one so this is what I was saying about the faraway landscapes if you need to pull those in then yes even though you're shooting a landscape you'll need a wider lens or sorry a longer telephoto lens not wider and if you want more of the actual environment that's when you would actually use something that has a bit of a wider angle of view so in a nutshell I hope this helps uh, understand you know decision making in regards to what kind of lens you should be using for whatever it is you're going to be shooting some of it is trial and error uh, you know but there are people that they're happy with their 18 140s or 18 135s you know and that that's all they shoot with or I believe there's like 18 250s now you know for just general all-purpose walk around they're fine however when you get into the higher end lenses um, you know, they're, they're pretty specific in regards to the focal lengths, you know, like 150, 450, you know, 200, 600, or you can get primes where it's just one focal length, 85, 35, 50, you know, but don't think of them as being limiting. You just have to understand the environment where you're going to be shooting and you take the tools that you need to get the shots that you're hoping for. So I hope this helps. Uh, it is a bit daunting. I, I know, I know, I know, I know. You, you ain't got to tell me once or twice. You ain't got to tell me no times. I already know it can be daunting. But we've all been there. And don't make, you know, don't think actually that you're never going to take the wrong lens. Because I promise you there will be those times when you just take the wrong lens. It happens to everybody. I've done it. Every single photographer I know and I speak to on a regular basis has done it. It's just something you learn from, you know, and that's and that's part of the that's part of the photography journey is taking the photos and learning from your mistakes and improving and moving on and learning how to plan your shoots. And that's pretty much it. Anyway, if you like the video, leave a like. If you haven't already, please do subscribe. It helps me out. And if you'd like to support the channel, I leave that information at the bottom of the description. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. And that's it for me. Thank you for tuning in. And you will see me on my next video. I'm out. How do you... I see this... Blah, blah, blah. Okay, let me start over again.